Welcome back. Uh, my name is Glenn Morgan, and this is We the Govern. Thank you for watching. This is part two of our interview with Brian Haywood, uh, the guy with Let's Go Washington, who's uh, really helped to make this uh, a dream, a reality for those of us who like to want to fix what's broken. And in our previous segment, we were kind of discussing the, just some things that, that the media is probably missing when they're reporting on this story. And we ended with the sausage factory of Olympia. So uh, one thing, uh, explain for our viewers, you know, from your perspective, what's going on right now. Because as we're recording this, uh, we've recently had a week of hearings and you were there testifying. I uh, got a chance to go in front of uh, a hearing and, um, that, and that was fascinating for me. I, I've seen it on TV, right? I, you know, never really done it and I haven't really been there. I uh, went in uh, to two of the hearings. The first hearing, I was supposed to be on a panel and supposed to be on a list. Uh, conveniently, they, they didn't have the list of the panel I was supposed to be on. Yeah. And then... Which um, one was that for? That was for the parental notification. Okay, right? got it. And <laughs> so, but I'm sitting there now and I'm listening to people and, uh, and I, you can kind of see there's a, the sign-in ratio, and I don't know how they choose who gets to talk, but the sign-in ratio was about 5,000 something to, you know, a couple hundred something. So there was this... 5,000 in favor. In favor yeah, 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 yeah. to only a couple of hundred that were opposed. Mm -hmm. But the, the speaking ratio didn't reflect that at all. I wasn't quite sure why, why and what their logic was. Um, there was sort of almost a 50-50 ratio on, on who got to speak. Sure. But, but sort of watching that and who they chose and, and what they would do. And um, in, the, in the House, there was a very strict, no questions can be asked of the panelists. Uh, and they, they laid out the rules before the hearing. I'm thinking, okay, those are what the rules are. So uh, then, uh, but then they didn't call me and so, okay, no big deal. I mean, there's a lot of people that wanted to speak. And, mm -hmm. and, I, and like, like we said, uh, it, it wasn't... Uh, it, there were, there were over 800,000 people that signed at least one of the initiatives. There were well over 400,000 that signed each of them. And those people's voices got a chance, I think, to be heard a little bit. And that was interesting to watch that whole, well, isn't this kind of cool? This is democracy with people that feel strongly about something enough to come down to Olympia on a dreary day and, right. and, and talk. Uh, in the second one, which was the police notification, or the police uh, pursuit, pursuit yeah. bill, uh, I got called on a panel, and I got to speak first, which was uh, interesting. And I thought, okay, we'll say our thing. And, and I'm trying to be um, tight, succinct, to the point, get my point across, not waste anybody's time. Right. And I'll, I'm not going to put all this in the same order that it happened, but one of the things that was really striking is that they had, uh, they being the, the leader of that committee, Manga Dinga and, and the, the committee, yep. had two out-of-state professors... And uh, that, you know, that cartoon Foghorn Leghorn, <laughs> one of them was like that guy, I'll say, I'll say a boy. I mean, he was, yeah. he was in the, right? I just, I could just see Foghorn Leghorn in my head, that big rooster walking around, preaching to everybody when nobody's listening, right? Just right. talking and saying nothing. Uh, and then the second one was uh, some guy from New York University. And they, they sort of filibustered. They took up a huge amount of time. And there were police officers and victims of this stupid law and they were opposed to it right the two they were opposed of course the filibusters right. yeah so it took up a big chunk of time spoke very long there was no limits on them and and i was like oh okay i gotta get this all in like two minutes or less right, right. if if i'm lucky if i get my two minutes and and they just and one of them spoke so long that even longer dinga had to say stop 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 <laughs> i'm right, going right. on too long uh so so it was a little bit looser there and the rules weren't weren't quite clear and then on, then on the panel that I was on, uh, they suddenly said, well, we want to ask the panel questions. And of course, the, the question that they were going to ask me was, what about people that were uh, killed by police that were pursuing? And, right. and I think it was intended to be a gotcha question. Sure. You, you heartless bastard. Mm -hmm. you know, you're not thinking about these people. And I guess the, the advantage I've had is I, I have thought about that. Mm -hmm. Was it, they, they asked a question like, was that taken into consideration when you made this bill? What, what research or what evidence do you do? I mean, it was this kind of no way to really answer the question with a gotcha question that should make you feel bad for being a human being. Right. Because the answer is it's tragic, right? Mm -hmm. if, if whether they're, even if they're a criminal or if they're an innocent victim and they're hit by the, by the police or by another car during a pursuit, that's a tragic thing, mm -hmm. right? And loss of life. No mom wants to hear that. No family wants to hear that. So there's like no answer to that other than 
it's terrible, right? And, right. and but it was clear that that was sort of a, I'm going to attempt to shoot at you. Right. And then there was another piece where they, uh, the law, they were, they'd gone through and they had all these people talk about beforehand, they had some people talk about, this is what we think the law does, this is how it impacts current law. And that was really informative because it was their analysts who had gone through the law and this is what we think it does and this is what it doesn't do. And right. Some questions back and forth on that. Uh, and it was, it was clear, the big change in this law, the big change in the police pursuit law is uh, they have to have a reasonable suspicion, they have to have suspicion that a crime was committed. Right. But there's an and after that. Right? There's a very important and. It's not just that. I can't, if, if your tags are out of, out of date, that in, a, in and of itself is not a reason for me to pursue you if you take off. Right. Um, however, there's an and, and the safety of the public is, is uh, endangered is kind of the way that right. I've paraphrased it. But it's, it's that sort of pairing that's there and it's important. And a lot of the safeguards that were put in before were kept in this current draft. So right. it, it, to me, it's not just going back to the old ways, it sort of took several of the pieces that were there and it allows cities that want to be more strict to be as strict as they want to be and there's jurisdictions that might have a, a different standard to use that and takes local control back to local control. Right. So all this is going on. Uh, the, the legislators knew, this one in particular, Patty Cooter I think was her name, she knew exactly what's going on and the, there was a a representative of the sheriffs uh, uh, and police officers that was to my right and, and just a good man sort of talking about the impact and trying to represent what's happened in the police community. And she's trying to drill him with a question and tries to cut him off. So he, 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 she's like, doesn't it say you can sh pursue for any, any crime that's committed? What about... Right, and then cut off, sure, classic. And, and, yeah. and he said, well, there's also this, no, 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 no don't go there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She interrupted him, right. and, and she's like, he's like, well, there's an ant, no, 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 it was so terrible that Manga Dinga is like, ah, we're just going to go skip that question and go on to something else, right? right, right. Watching that was sort of fascinating. Yeah. Uh, and then all these police officers and victims that were ignored so that we could have a South Carolina and a New York professor on, right. uh, spoke to this, this is, yeah, it's a hearing, but it's political theater. Right. That's what we're doing right now is it's political theater. Well, now, you know, the choices that they've, they're making uh, with three initiatives that they're going to, looks like, next week, uh, it, it appears they're certainly on path to be approved. Yeah, that's wow. Which is a huge victory. Right. Any way you measure it, I, I, I think that's a big deal. <laughs> Me too. And then Me you too. have three of them, though, that they're going to ignore and put on the ballot. Why don't, you, from your perspective, talk about the distinction between those, those two groups? Two, two groups, yep. Well, I, I know that they're all popular because we got over 400,000 signatures. We did a poll of Washingtonians and over 400,000 on each of them said, we like this and would like to see a law. Right. That's a big, big poll. But I think, what they found, I think they've switched from, from playing legislative politics to electoral politics. Right. And what I mean by that is they looked down in November and they said, what's going to be the most dangerous or what's going to be the most advantageous for us in November? What should we do with an eye on November and possibly a governor's race mm -hmm. and possibly legislative races? Yeah, their own races. Yeah. yeah, and what's going to hurt us and what's going to help us. And so I believe, and then on top of that, they did their own polling, which I'm sure showed the same thing that our polling is showing and that, that these are all very, very popular. The three they chose to have hearings on uh, were ones... I think they decided, well, from my point of view, I'm gonna, I don't know what was in their head, but from my point of view, they were ones that were so common sense that when you told your friends about them, uh, they almost went, wait, really? That's, you have to, that has to be an initiative? <laughs> right, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, in this state it is. Right. And so they tried to play it off as, well, really nothing is happening here. Right. Uh, a classic on the nothing's happening here, nothing to see folks, was the income tax, right. where they... they spent their whole time saying, oh, this income tax doesn't do anything. We already have a no income tax in the Constitution. Why are you wasting your time trying to prevent an income tax when you should be using your time to try to implement a, an income tax, right? That was, that was almost <laughs> right. there, right? Yeah, yeah. And you're like, wait, wait really? That's yeah, what your, yeah. your, your, That's your argument you get out is? Of that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that was fun to kind of watch. Yeah. But, um, but they didn't have a real uh, 
real strong argument for any of them. The police pursuit, uh, there was an emotional appeal. There was a woman who had lost her son who'd been hit by the police. And, and yeah, absolutely, right? And, but then you have to step back and you have to say, well, let's, well, let's weigh the whole thing. Uh, um, sympathy and, and empathy to the woman and anyone else who's lost their, their loved ones because of that. But at the same time, what's happened with uh, the rates of crime and, and everything, right? And, and I think on the whole, there's an argument and the public it feels that way, especially you saw that one in particular, the police pursuit one, had 96% uh, in sign in in support of people that signed in, of over 6,000 people that signed in. Right, right. So you, you had that, and then the other one was the parental notification. Right. And uh, they, these were ones, there are several things about them. Number one, they were co so common sense that it was hard to be on the opposite side of it. Right. Number two, there's no money backing those. Right. Right? There's no moneyed interest that's going to lose money. It's not taking money away from some kind of grifting operation. Yeah, there's no, yeah. Yeah, there's no grift on those, really. Right. Um, on the income tax, no grift yet. Yes, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so these were ones that they could pass that way, and they weren't going to have to spend anything, and it was probably going to be the most dangerous for them with political capital if they were on the wrong side of that at the polls. So I think that's, that's part of it. And then if you look at the other three, well, those have... I, those are almost the uh, the Jay Inslee and Cronies retirement package, aren't they? Right, right. right. Uh, the 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 cap and trade, which does nothing to take even one ounce of the of carbon out of the environment. And it was probably the most popular one. I mean, I volunteered far, to collect signatures, far. and I yes. mean that was one of the easiest ones to get <laughs> right, signatures right. on the on the right. whole thing. And th this is an interesting thing. I think their polling is. I've I've seen some of the stuff that's come out. Yeah. And I think their polling is saying, if we use this wording, like if, right, right then they won't do well. And they're, right. they're relying on that. What they're missing is that there's a visceral reaction at the, at the working human level of people that are like, damn it, my car gas is so expensive. Right. I can't afford to go to work. Uh, and they don't, that, well, then there's no balance. And so right. if people understand it or know about it, and they don't have to know a lot about it other than their gas tank is expensive and their groceries are doubly expensive and their, and their heat bill. at home is expensive. Yeah, those three things have all gone up thanks right. to the CCA. Right. Uh, then, no, I don't like it. And, and what does it do, by the way? Oh, it makes a bunch of uh, green jobs for cronies the, uh, of Jay Inslee so they can feel good about themselves. And donate to his political campaign. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and that would entrench it, right? Right, right, I mean, right. They, they had two billion, this is the thing, two billion dollars that they took off the backs of commuters, of daily commuters. Right, right. They took two billion dollars off of people's backs and they're using that to go fund something that will not take any carbon out of the equation. And they, they, I know one of the other arguments I see is they're trying to make this argument that the economy is going to be hurt by, uh, yeah. by, taking, by these passing. And that is the one that I love because here it is, you're extracting cash from people right. and then you're claiming that, well, if we stop taking your money, it's going to hurt the economy. You know, I, how no, does that hurt? Yeah, I mean, that's I've great. seen two numbers too, like just this morning. So first it was Mark, Mark Elias, Senator mm -hmm. Mark Elias was saying, oh, bridges are going away, potholes are going to be, you know, seven miles wide and right. any of that special project that you like, it's dead, right? It's yeah. gone. So he's threatening all this doom and gloom on things that are not like, wait, that's all infrastructure that should be, is that a different budget? Aren't you, you know, in the and, transpo budget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and then when he was called on, he said, no, 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 I meant ferries. I meant ferries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, of course you did. Of course <laughs> you did. Uh, so there's sort of this lie. And he was using a $4.5 billion, the world is ending. Right. This morning, someone asked me for a quote. People say, and who the heck are these people? People say $7.5 billion, right? They, you can just make up any number you want. $7.5 billion is going to get taken out of the economy. No, let's back up for a minute. The state for the last five years has had $19 billion in surpluses. $19 billion, that's almost $4 billion a year that they've had more money than they even budgeted for, but they're suddenly going to the Washington people saying, claiming poverty. Right. Oh, we don't have enough money. We have to raise more taxes. We have to tax these people. We have to tax, we're going to have to tax your driving in. Oh, we're not really taxing your driving in to the, to the uh, work, but we are, right? Yeah. Uh, and it's because we don't have any money. No, we've got $19 billion in surpluses over the last five years. And they squandered every penny. And they've just wasted it, and nothing have they prioritized. When you've got that much surplus and you don't prioritize things, and then you come back to the voters and say, we still don't have enough money. Mm -hmm. you're, then you're, you're, a, you're like a college kid that's addicted to meth, uh, whose parents are giving you money for your apartment and your car, and you go, I can't afford my apartment and car. Well, what happened? Well, I spent all my money on meth. 
but I need my apartment and my car. You spent all your money on meth, right? And the, the, the taxpayers have given them tons of money for the bed and the food and the, and, and they're just coming back like addicts. We need more money. And I, and I think even if they raised the rate to 100% confiscation, it wouldn't be enough. Yeah, it never it's is enough. never enough. Yeah. It's never enough. Well, Brian, thank you so much for uh, talking about uh, this subject. And I'm going to uh, close this segment right now, but I want to follow up just with a discussion of what are your plans for the future. But with that, uh, uh, thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for part three of an interview with Brian Haywood and Let's Go Washington and the successful initiatives in Washington State.